Hi, YouTube, I guess. Um, my name is Jill, and I decided I was going to do this video about three minutes ago. I just finished teaching a yoga class, and I'm still in my home studio where I've been teaching since March. Um, and that is stuff from my wedding, which was eight years ago. So that's that's kind of what you need to know about me in a nutshell. Um, but I am the top heavy yogi. I started an Instagram page with that, which I frankly have not done enough with. I also own the domain. Someday I will do more work with top heavy yogi because I find that a lot of yoga poses are not great for people who are top heavy like me or people who just have a little bit of extra stuff that they need to move around. So I wanted to be able to help yogis navigate their bodies when their bodies get in the way of poses. But that's not why I'm making this video. And um, let me tell you a little bit more about why I'm making this video. I have shoulder surgery coming up in just over two weeks and I'm scared. <laughs> um, but I realized as I was prepping for the surgery, there are not a whole lot of resources for yogis who are dealing with the recovery from shoulder injuries from shoulder surgery. There are a lot of resources for, oh, you've got a tweaked shoulder. Here's what to do and not to do in your practice. But there's really nothing about like, oh, you are hypermobile in your shoulders and now you're going to have surgery and it's going to tighten that up. Your recovery is going to be a bitch. So I decided um, to start doing these videos. I got into yoga to help people and that's what I'm hoping these videos are going to do too. And uh, because I decided to do these videos, this video, at least five minutes ago, I am talking into my computer via Zoom and you can see the reflection of not just the computer monitor, but my ring light because there's a light bulb out in this room. So I needed a little bit of supplemental, but I'm wearing my glasses. So we're just going to say that this works for now. So let me tell you about why I'm having shoulder surgery. About seven years ago, I think, um, I was snuggling on the sofa with my dog. It was very late at night and we'd both fallen asleep. And my dog, when she was living, unfortunately lost her a couple of months ago, but, um, my dog and my cats always had to be fully separated because my dog had quite a high prey drive that they did not tell us about in the shelter. But by the time we learned that it was too late and we were in love. So we spent nine years keeping our dog and cats separated. So about seven years ago, the dog and I had fallen asleep and suddenly she startled awake. She was sleeping on my chest. She startled awake and I was worried that one of the cats had gotten loose and I didn't want her to chase this cat because I've had to pull the cat out of her mouth before the cat's out of her mouth. I actually got cat scratch fever once. So I didn't want to deal with that. And so I clamped down on her and she was so insistent that she needed to get up and run. And I don't know if it was her trying to break away from me or if it was me subsequently hitting the floor when she did break away from me. But I um, hurt my shoulder. I certainly subluxed, possibly dislocated my shoulder. There is a difference. I'll talk about it some other time, maybe. So, um, you know, I called my doctor. He put me on some anti-inflammatories, told me it wasn't broken and probably wasn't dislocated because nobody had to put it back into place. And I did a little bit of physical therapy and that was fine. The big change in my life at that point was I had just started rock climbing and then I had to stop rock climbing for a little while. Um, so fast forward to about two and a half years ago, right when I was starting my yoga teacher training and I was also in rehearsals for a play. We were doing Macbeth. I was Lady Macduff and Lady Macduff is one of those great Shakespearean characters that has one good scene. That was great for me because I didn't have to go to very many rehearsals. Um, and I'd actually played Lady Macduff before for the same theater company at the University of Pennsylvania when I was an undergrad. I'm so not an undergrad anymore, but they let alums come back and audition. So I got to reprise this role. It was great. And Lady Macduff um, winds up getting abducted and later murdered. So when the murderers come on stage, the blocking dictated that the, the kid who was playing the murderer, and I say kid because he was literally half my age, was supposed to take my arm around and pin it in place. And I think he got a little bit too excited in dress rehearsal. And I just felt my arm pull out and go back in. And I shouted and we had to stop the scene. And then I kind of continued the rest of the rehearsal. My arm was still in place. I could still move it. It hurt. Um, but, you know, we finished the rehearsal. I finished the run of plays with my shoulder taped in place to stabilize it. And then I started physical therapy again and made really good progress in physical therapy. Uh, so that would have been September and by like February, I think, I was pretty much back to my normal yoga pose, including Urdhva Dhanurasana with my arms fully extended, which, you know, that's upward facing bow or wheel pose. And I cried when I was 
back in that pose because that pose means a lot to me. I, my back is really bendy. I love those big heart openers. Uh, and my, my friend who was in teacher training with me next to me was like, are you okay? I'm totally fine. I'm better than fine. Anyway, so that was um, about two years ago. And I've been teaching and loving it and hadn't really had any issues with my shoulder. Once in a while, if I would get into like a bind, sometimes my shoulder would be a little bit cranky with me, but it was okay. I never went back to rock climbing after the second injury because it just seemed too risky. It's something I'd love to get back to someday. And maybe after the surgery that's coming up, I will. Um, but otherwise my life just kind of went on. And then the pandemic happened and one morning in probably April, I woke up and I rolled over onto my left side. I usually sleep on my right, but my husband is on my left. And so sometimes I, I roll over to face him and um, my shoulder hurt. It was like the whole back, my, my posterior deltoid hurt. And then I felt this like kind of tingling that went all the way down my arm to these fingers. And so I, th I thought I just had a pinched nerve. I kind of ignored it for a little while until I couldn't ignore it any longer. And I went to my doctor who said, yeah, sounds like a pinched nerve and you have a history of injury on the shoulder. So it's possible that the old injury has just exacerbated something. I'm going to send you to physical therapy. So I was in physical therapy for 10 weeks, 12 weeks, something like that. I went to 22 physical therapy appointments. Um, and at a certain point, I just plateaued and my physical therapist discharged me from PT and told me to go back to the doctor. Normally when you're discharged from PT, it's like really exciting because that means that you've, you've healed enough that you can kind of go back to, to life. And so this was really discouraging. I don't like failing anything. And I felt like I'd failed out of physical therapy. So I went back to the doctor. The doctor said, if you, yeah, if you've plateaued at this point, you probably have something else going on. So she sent me to get an X-ray, which showed nothing. And then she sent me to get an MRI with an arthrogram. So an arthrogram, is where they inject your joint full of dye. And they do that under an x-ray machine. And the whole process, if you're getting it done at a teaching hospital, especially takes a while. So I had an appointment at like 11 o'clock in the morning um, and to sit around in the hospital wearing an N95 mask for a while. And then they, they brought me back and had me like get undressed. Then I laid on the table for a good long time while the doctors finished lunch. I could see them actually <laughs> finishing lunch, not relevant. Anyway, the doctor came in put an x-ray machine on me, figured out where to stick the needle, injected me with this radioactive dye. I didn't feel anything. They'd given me a shot of lidocaine first, went to get the MRI, not my first rodeo, loud, fine. And go my way. And uh, that was a Friday afternoon, like four hours, I think, of my day. And then Monday, I get an alert in the patient portal for the hospital that my MRI results are ready. I don't know how to read an MRI, but I'm going to read the report anyway, because I'm curious. And I see that it says I have extensive tearing and also a deformity that I can't remember what it's called right now. That's my bad. Um, and the upper humeral head of my bone. So like right where the, the arm bone connects to the shoulder joint, there was a divot there basically. And so I had an appointment later that week with my doctor to look at the results. And she said, look, you know, if it were me, I would have surgery because it's just going to keep happening and it's going to get worse. Um, and I'm 37 years old and I want to be doing and teaching yoga for a really long time. So I decided in case she's right, I'll go have surgery. So I went to the first surgeon. I saw two surgeons. The first surgeon, the one that she had recommended was a really nice guy. And he was really patient and spent a lot of time with me and explained to me the nature of my injury and how the surgery would work and everything else. And then I said to him, I want to show you a picture. And I showed him a picture of me up in Urdhva Dhanurasana that was shot over at um, Maha Studio, one of the studios where I teach. It's where I did my training in Philadelphia. This photo of me in Urdhva Dhanurasana in um, February of this year. And he looked at it and basically was like, yeah, that's just not going to happen for you anymore. And I said, well, that's not okay. And I burst into tears and he said, you know, sorry. He was really nice about it. He wasn't a jerk or anything, but I um, decided that I should probably get a second opinion. And after a couple of days of moping, I asked a bunch of people who they would recommend. And I was referred to another surgeon. Um, 
at the Rothman Institute here in Philadelphia. And he actually works with the Phillies baseball team with pitchers. And if you've ever seen a pitch in slow motion, or if you know anything about pitchers, you know how far back their arm has to get when they're pitching. So there's a ton of flexibility that happens, but there's also a lot of strength involved to be able to throw a 90 mile an hour pitch, hundred mile an hour pitch more sometimes starting way back here, which is not a range of motion that a lot of people have. And so I wanted to know that I would have strength and stability at the very end range of my motion. And it seemed like this was the guy who could help me with that. And so I had an appointment with this surgeon who was also really nice and funny and like slightly older than me, which is, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm close to that line where I'm going to get older than my doctors real soon. Um, but he looked at the same photo that I'd shown the first surgeon and he was like, yeah, that's totally fine. We can do that. So I scheduled surgery for January 7th. And there's a whole long story that I'm not going to get into right now about why I scheduled surgery for the new year rather than for before the end of the year. Maybe I'll tell you, tell you that story at some point. I probably will. But anyway, um, I found out yesterday that I am for sure cleared for surgery on January 7th. So in two weeks and two days, my life is going to change a lot. And my yoga practice is going to change a lot. And I'm going to take a couple of weeks off teaching, but I'm going to get back to teaching and I won't be able to lead from the mat like I have been since we've been teaching on camera, but um, I'll figure it out. And so I want to use this channel as an opportunity to, to chronicle my rehabilitative rehabilitation. It's the right word, rehabilitation process and how I've been teaching and what I've learned. And before I have surgery, I'm hoping to do a couple of videos of modifications that I've been doing so that I could still do certain poses while injured. And uh, I don't know how often I'm going to update this channel or whether I'm going to start blogging to accompany it. I figured video was going to be easier because I'm only going to have the use of one hand and typing isn't going to be super fun, but we'll see. I don't know what this is going to become. Uh, I'm hoping that once I've recovered, I'll be able to, to pursue the top heavy yogi part of this in more earnest and put more videos out there about how to navigate around your body and balance and bind when you've got a bigger chest or other stuff that gets in the way. But in the meanwhile, because there isn't a lot out there for yogis who are having this particular surgery, I'm going to do it. So I'll see you around at some point, probably once or twice more before surgery and certainly a lot after that. Until then, bye everybody.